This is the Allen Revival Hour, bringing into your home some of the most dramatic scenes ever to be recorded on film. Thousands of people come regularly under this great tent to see and hear the wonderful miracles which take place day after day, night after night. We invite you to attend the Allen Revival services whenever you can, and to join us now in worship as we sing, preach, pray for salvation, and ask God's deliverance for the sick, the crippled, and the oppressed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present to you the man that God has anointed with a miracle ministry, with a sermon de designed to bring God. help and blessing and deliverance to you, God's man of faith and power, Reverend A.A. A. Allen. Praise the Lord. Everyone happy tonight? If you're happy, say amen. How many feel the presence of the Lord under the tent tonight? Do you believe that our God is here to do great things? Do you believe he's here to heal the sick? Yeah. Do you believe he's here to save the lost? Yeah. Do you believe he's going to do it tonight? Yeah. Raise your hands and let's rejoice together in the Lord for just a moment. Yes. And do you that watch the telecast? Our God moves into your home. He comes into your living room. He moves into your bedroom. He slips right into that hospital ward. Hear me. The same Christ who moves and works that our people here under this tent, please, is in your home. And hear me, not only is he here, he's there. And as he moves, and as he works here, remember, he will move and work there in your home. If you have a child that's sick, if you have a loved one that's sick, roll them out of that bedroom. Bring them into the living room. I want them to see what God is doing under this tent. And in just a moment, if your child is sick, your loved one is sick. Bring them in in front of your television screen. We're going to reach out across the miles in a moment. You say you couldn't touch us here. No, but there's someone in your home who can touch you. And his name is... His name is Jesus. And I'm going to ask him to touch you in just a moment. And remember, if I believe God here and you believe God there, he's going to touch you. And when you get a touch, there'll be the same reaction. There'll be the same results there uh, that we see here night after night under the tent. And now from Luke, the ninth chapter, the first verse, he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and he gave them authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now listen carefully to me for the next 10 minutes. I want to show you not only that Christ had power to heal the sick, but year after year, even after he ascended, sat down on the right hand of the Father, he imparted this same power, I mean the power of God, through the prayer of faith, operating through men who believe God and will pay the prayer of faith. That is the power of God against Satan, against sin, against sickness, disease, and infirmity. Every one of you will agree with me that Christ was victorious at Calvary. Is that right? But hear me, though he was victorious at Calvary, we must personally apply that victory that was won at Calvary. 
Christ's victory at Calvary will remain a dead letter until it is applied in your specific case. Every one of you who watch our telecast today can apply that victory in your specific case, and as sure as you do, hear me, that victory is good today. Christ has done all he can do for you until you apply the victory that was won at Calvary. To do any more, if Jesus would do any more than that, he'd have to kill the devil entirely. But the Lord isn't going to kill the devil. He's left the devil out. And he's left him loose and let him continue to move and work and operate because you need some good spiritual, physical exercise. And there's nothing so good for God's children to come face to face with the devil and learn that you have power over him and can exercise that power if you will believe what Jesus said. Can you all say amen with me? So it isn't necessary for me to tell you that again and again and again, Christ exercised power over the devil, power over sickness, power over disease, power over infirmity. The blind saw, the lame leaped for joy, deaf ears were unstopped, demon spirits and firm spirits came out of many were possessed with them. But hear me, it didn't stop there. Look in the sixth chapter of Acts, the eighth verse, and here was a deacon, just an ordinary deacon in an early church. And listen, you belong to a church. Nearly every one of you who listen to me belong to a church, and you've got a deacon in your church. And listen, if this deacon in the sixth chapter of Acts, the eighth verse, had power to perform miracles and do wonders, the deacon in your church can have the same power. Why, if God would give this deacon by the name of Stephen power to heal the sick and to perform miracles and not give it to your deacon, then God is a respecter of persons. Why, he would do for people years ago what he will not do today. But he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is no respecter of persons. What he will do for one there, he will do for people today. And the scripture says, and I quote, Stephen was the just a merely deacon. Listen, he was full of faith and power, and he did great wonders and miracles among the people. Who was it? Just an early, a deacon in the early church, but he was full of faith and power. And here is the secret of power. You must have faith. Flip your Bibles two pages and look in the 8th chapter of Acts, the 6th and 7th verse. Here Philip is just another deacon in the early church, but he went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. And let me quote you a verse of scripture. The people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he performed. Did he perform miracles? For unclean spirits crying with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them, and many that were taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Now, I'm leaving the preachers out of it. I'm leaving the ministers out of it just now. In these two particular instance, incidents, neither one of these had even been called, or among the twelve, neither among the seventy. They hadn't been commissioned, neither called, or ordained to preach, and yet they had so much faith that wherever they went, the lame were walked. The deaf ears were unstopped, and God performed miracles through them because of their faith. Here is the Apostle Paul in the 19th chapter of Acts 11 to 12th verse. And my Bible says that God brought special miracles through this man. And listen, this is 23 years after the ascension, or 23 years after Christ ascended and sat down on the right hand of the Father. But the scripture says that God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went from them. You know what I mean? They saw that Paul was healing the sick by laying his hands upon them. And here come uh, many mothers or, or fathers with their babies, or they wanted Paul to go out into the hospitals or their homes to pray. Why, he said, they don't have time to go. But here, and he took his handkerchief out, laid his hands on it. He said, here, take my handkerchief and lay it upon that baby and it'll get well. And the power of God went forth with those handkerchiefs and brought healing to the sick, the diseased, and days gone by, even though Paul never got to them. Here comes someone else with a handkerchief. Says, oh, Paul, lay your hands on this. I'll take it and put it upon my child. I'll put it upon my mother, my grandmother. And he just began to lay his hands on handkerchiefs. Now, can't you see it? Here comes the little lady. She took her apron off. She said, oh, Paul, put your hands on this apron. I'm going to take it to my mother. She's home in bed. She's sick. And as they took their handkerchiefs and as they took the aprons, the power of God went with them. Yeah. Hear me. Not only miracles, but the Bible said special miracles. 
Let me relate really something to you. Thousands of people across the nation write us for little handkerchiefs. We have ladies who cut out little squares of linen. We lay our hands upon them and we send them out to all parts of the world, absolutely free of charge. And some of the most marvelous testimonies come in of people who have been marvelously healed as they lay these little bits of cloth on their bodies in the faith of Calvary's victory. If you want us to send you one, we'd be glad to do so. We send them all parts of the world free of charge. But listen, you must receive them in faith and as you do the power of the Spirit of God will come upon you if you do it in faith and God will heal you instantly not that there's any power in a little cloth but there is power in faith and the power of God will go with it and this is God's method today of reaching the sick the disease and the afflicted that can't get into our great campaigns across the country look in the 28th chapter of Acts and you'll find here that 29 years after the ascension 29 years after Christ was sitting and sat down on the right hand of the Father, Paul was still healing the sick. So he gave this power uh, to his 12 disciples in the 10th chapter of Matthew. In Luke 9, 1, he commissioned them again, and he told them to heal the sick. In the 10th chapter, Luke, the 17th verse, the Bible said he sent out 70 more, and he sent them to preach the gospel and heal the sick, and they all came back declaring that even the devils were subject unto them. Is that right? But somebody said no one else ever healed the sick but that 12 or that 70. I beg your pardon. In the ninth chapter, Mark, the 38th verse, here they come running in one day and they said, Oh, Jesus, we have found another one. We have found another one casting out devils in thy name, healing the sick in thy name, and he's not with us. He wasn't among that 12, neither was he among the 70. And but he said, we found another one. He wasn't with us when we were ordained. What should we do? Jesus said, leave him alone. What I'm trying to show you, hear me, that there were others in Bible days who healed the sick that were not among uh, the disciples, that were not with the twelve, neither with the seventy, but they healed the sick. And our last thoughts, Jesus, before he ascended and sat down on the right hand of the Father, said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. I believe that there are literally millions of you people who watch this telecast would like to claim these promises. You'd like for the power of God to move and work and operate through you. Why, God said, you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He promised if you believe what he said, you too can lay your hands on the sick and see them recover. Under this tent, night after night, thousands of people claim these promises and are bringing deliverance to the sick, the diseased, and the afflicted because they believe God's word. Bow your heads and I'm going to ask God to give you sufficient faith to believe everything in the book. Matters not who you are. You may be another one. You may be merely a believer, but hear me. If you will believe God's promise, these signs that Jesus said to follow will materialize and develop in your life, and you too can be a blessing to your loved ones, your friends, and your neighbors. You can lay your hands on that little child there in your home, and Jesus will heal him because you believe with me. Father, grant that this message we preach today will find its way in the heart of every believer. And for those that do not believe, for the ones that are bound by sin, that are bound by iniquity, save them, O oh God, so that they too can be instrumental in being a blessing to the sick, the diseased, and the afflicted. Don't let a one who have watched us today that have heard this sermon be lost without God, but save them all, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, friends, you're about to witness the healing of the sick and the diseased and the afflicted. Not because I'm a healer, but because the healer is here. His name is Jesus. We are not a healer. We merely pray. And it is Christ who heals the sick today. These people that will be healed on this ramp here in this service will be people who have faith. But remember, when we're through praying here, we're going to slip right in your home and pray for you. And if you have faith as these people have faith, you too can be healed just as sure as the people under this tent are healed. And this is our prayer of faith for the sick and the suffering. Everybody say praise the Lord with me. I see you're deaf in one ear. Left ear. In your left ear. How long have you been deaf? Over 15 years. 15 years, that's a long time. How'd you lose your hearing in that ear? Well, 
just, it just knows getting gradually, no. Uh -huh. uh, and you'd like to hear out of that again? Deaf one, deaf one. I can't hear at all now. And you're going to, you want to hear out of I it tonight? I want to see it tonight. This is a good place to come. God's doing it for nearly everybody that comes. I believe it. You believe it tonight. I do too. Now, Jesus, here's a woman that can't hear. And I ask the Lord to open it up for the glory of I felt it open. Oh, glory. It's open. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Holy Name. Wait a minute. I'm going to show you. I believe. You stop this here up and see if you can't hear out there. Everybody say amen. amen. What? Amen. You hear him? I, I, I felt it open up. I see you too. I know it. Now well, listen to this. You hear gonna hear my watch. You hear that? Oh, I certainly do for the first time. Please hold that. Just that quick? <laughs> for fifteen years it's been closed. Been closed. Put your hands up and say thank you, Jesus. Okay. Friend, isn't this wonderful? Don't you believe God would heal every person? Right in their homes if they believe God. Friend, all you have to do is believe the Lord and trust God. He'll do it for you. Here's the deaf mute. The little girl that's never been able to hear, never been able to talk. Deaf and dumb all her life. How many have faith in God tonight? Amen. <clears throat> Care. I'm going to pray. God's going to open your ears and you're going to talk. You can't hear and you can't talk. Uh huh. Poor thing. She's never been able to say one word, never hear nothing. Miss Pitiful, she's going to talk, she's going to hear. But I'm going to tell you why so many deaf people can't hear. I mean, why so many deaf people can't talk. They've never heard a sound, and they've never learned how to uh, make sounds because they've never heard a sound. And I have found in our dealing with deaf mutes that even after their ears are open, they have to be taught how to speak. A person that's never talked generally is because they've never heard any sound. They don't know what to say because they don't know how to repeat or, or uh, copy a sound. And I found in every case, we have to teach them how to talk and start with just the plain ABCs of speech like mama and daddy. The person's never heard, very seldom ever talk. Thou devil of deafness, thou devil of deafness, thou dumb spirit, in the name of Jesus, who renders this woman speechless, I rebuke you, Satan. Take your hands off of this woman in the name of Jesus. Open. Open. In the name of Jesus. Open. She's not deaf now. Wait a minute, I'm not through. You hear me, don't you? <laughs> this girl's been deaf, totally deaf, and totally dumb all her life. Now she can hear me. I'm going to teach her to talk. Look here. You're going to talk now. You hear me? You hear me? Isn't that sweet? We're going to start with the plain, with the plain ABCs of speech. Look here now. Mama. No, wait till I show you. Mama. Mama. That's not bad for the first time. Because I gave this girl a prayer card. 
And the most, one of the most pitiful cases I've ever seen when I gave her this blue fire card. Somebody came with her, told us her condition. Poor girl can't even make a noise. She can't say a word. Look at Mama. Papa. You're doing better. All right. Listen, you're doing better than I did the first time. My mama used to sit with me for hours and say, Mama, Mama. I said, that, 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 that. I tried for two months to teach one of my, my older son how to say dad, dad. He said, Mama, every time. <laughs> and one day, it just tickled me. He said, dad, dad. And it took me two months to teach him how to say dad, dad. <laughs> this girl's doing good. Look here. Dad, D. That's not so good yet. No. Dad D. Wait a minute. Let me try something easy. Papa. Papa. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This is her first lesson. I believe she's doing pretty good. Amen. Now I'll tell you what I'd like for you to do. Whoever bought this girl, take her home and give her some good lessons. She can hear what you're saying now. In two days, you'll have her saying everything. Mama, you take her on home. God's done something for this deaf mute. You're having a top job to walk, aren't you? What's all your trouble? I had broke my leg, and the sprain in my ankle, the doctor said, was worse than the break. Uh-huh. And it just keeps on, it, does, it keeps swelling, and I get to where I can't walk on it. I see. And I have one bad eye. It's mainly that right leg that you broke. Yes, sir. You want God to heal it up? I know he's going to heal it. I believe he's already done it. You believe he's doing it now? Yes, thank you, Jesus. She says she believes God's healing that broken leg. Oh, she broke her leg in the spring, and it's never healed oh, up, right in the joint. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Poor thing can't hardly walk. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus! Lay your hand upon this limb tonight. Cause this bone to grow together, Lord. In the name of Jesus! Then it's a night, Lord. Somehow knit that bone together, Lord, and cause it to stay together. Answer my prayer, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name. So you believe you'll do it? There's nothing too hard for God. We just pray for everything. And when we have faith, God does it. Thank you, Jesus. He says that right one. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see what the Lord's done for it. Thank you, Jesus. Stand on that left one. Thank you. Pick this right one up. Thank you. Pick it up high. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Yes, kick it out here. Thank you, Jesus. Kick it out here. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand on this right one. And kick, pick that left one up. Jump up and down on both of them. Do it again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I it don't hurt? No, it's all right. Thank it's all right. Jesus, it's all right. Oh, thank you. That quick? Yes. Do you think it'll ever hurt anymore? No, it won't hurt. You don't if think it? If it does, it's healed anyhow. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I, I'd like to see you start running. Thank you, Jesus. Come right down this way. Do you see the difference? See what God's done for that woman? While the Spirit of God is moving, we're going to pray. And now, friend... Our prayer of faith for you right there in your home. I told you in just a moment I was going to pray for you. Listen, you have seen tonight what God's done here. And the same Christ is in your home if you did as I told you to do last week. If you invited him to come in and live in your house. And the Bible says the arm of the Lord is not short. That means his arm is long. And while I pray right here, I'm going to ask Jesus to reach out right there in your home and touch you. If you have a child, a baby, the sick or diseased or afflicted, bring them right in in front of your television screen. And while I reach out there, by faith, I'm going to touch that child. And I'm going to ask Jesus to touch that child. If you have a grandmother, a friend, or a lover, or a sick, bring them in there right now. And I'm going to pray. And as you believe God, I'm going to believe God. And the work is done there the same as it is here. And hundreds and hundreds of people under this tent tonight, I dare say thousands, are going to join me in prayer. Everybody under this tent, raise your hand while I pray. My Father, in the name of Jesus, as we reach out tonight across the miles, 
Let us touch by faith that boy, that girl, that child, the baby there, Lord, with that raging fever, that blind mother, that crippled daddy. Oh, Lord, that girl, that boy, this crippled by polio, the one in the wheelchair, the one there, Lord, with the crutches. Touch them by thy divine power tonight. Take away all sickness and all disease for thy glory. Make them completely whole now by thy nail-scarred hand. Honor our prayer of faith tonight for the sick. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you have felt the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, it's a sign God's done something. Put your hand to heaven and just thank God and praise him for what he's done for you right now. 